Please welcome to the ring now from Brazil, Rafael Zumbano Long. It's all about Anthony Joshua and how he performs. The smile, as always, so relaxed, so cool, loves what he does. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here he is. AJ. Ladies and gentlemen, Eddie Hearns from Matchroom Sport proudly present eight rounds of boxing in the heavyweight division. We're sponsored by 888 Sport, Scott's Menswear, Stub Hub, and we buy anyhouse.com. And a very warm welcome to our viewers joining us live here on Sky Sports. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the great city of Birmingham! <laughs> Our official supervisor from the British Boxing Board of Control is Mr. Dave Rowland. Timekeeper at the bell is Mr. Martin Fallon. 
When the action begins at the bell rings, the man in charge is Mr. Phil Edwards of Preston, England. And now, ladies and gentlemen, up and away we go! Introducing to you... Fighting out of the red corner were the black trunks from with Ben Boyd and his 16 stone, 2 pounds, 47 fight record, 36 wins, 29 inside the scheduled distance. 10 losses and one draw comes to the ring as the reigning Brazilian and South American heavyweight champion from Sao Paulo, Brazil. Please welcome Rafael Zubano Lula. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here he is. Fighting out of the blue corner and a white trunks trim with red and black. He weighed in at 17 stone and 10 pounds with a perfect professional record. 11 contests, 11 wins, all inside the scheduled distance. He comes to the ring undefeated as the Olympic gold medalist, two-time ABA champion, a member of the British Empire, and the reigning WBC Heavy expectations. Fight number 12 for Anthony Gentlemen, Joshua, the MBE. You know what they expect of you both? Keep your punches on the target area. Watch your head in close. And remember, defend yourselves at all time. Good luck. What a Brazilian Rafael Zambano love. Almost 50 fights in his 10 year career. Can be dangerous early, can be stopped. Looks a level below. Can he provide rounds before Joshua's? Next challenge penned in for May the 30th. American Kevin Johnson, Johnson's ringside here tonight. And he is ready for three weeks' time. So a tool sharpener for Joshua, unless the unthinkable happens, however unlikely that may be. He's back from a fresh stress fracture, Joshua, which kept him out for five months. He got a three-round win over... Jason Gavin in Newcastle. You were, of course, there, Glenn, and he looked as good as ever. Yeah, he looked as good as ever. I, I, you know, I'm a little bit worried that he starts to do a little bit too, of the, too much of the muscle building because he's a little bit stiffer than usual, but that's maybe why they want to give him another little workout just to, to get loose, to get those punches flowing again. That powerful jab, such a weapon for a heavyweight. Arguably Lennox Lewis's best punch, Larry Holmes too. And you remember Larry Holmes watching Joshua in London when he was over. Body shot and a right hand there from Joshua. He looks so powerful. And flexible too. Yeah, but I hope they still keep working on that on that looseness, you know, which I think he needs, which Lennox had, Frank Bruno much much musclier build and it looks like you know he is getting very very powerful so sort of labored jab being attempted by zambano love tentative and there's the right hand of joshua almost at driving through the defense Well, I'm not sure why Zambano's added the name Love. I don't think that's going to get him anywhere in this fight. Just can't get into it at all. Body shot from Joshua. He's doing as he pleased. And he's rattling in hooks from either side here in Birmingham. Good defence. No chinks in the armour yet at all, Glenn. No, he looks very, very relaxed. He's going he's gonna to need to be a little bit more tighter and, and sharper when he when he fights Johnson he's gonna have to be more aware but I think he's coming this relatively casual 
let's, let's hope not too casual. Yeah, much, much tougher test lie ahead. Kevin Johnson in three weeks' time, former world title challenger. And very tough. And the question there will be, will Joshua be able to get rid of him early or will he take him the distance? It doesn't look like this guy, Zambano Love, has got anything to fend Joshua off, not on what we've seen so far. Can he do it inside a round? No urgency, very relaxed, taking his time. And just misses there from the Brazilian. Watford's ever so popular, six foot six inch heavyweight, Anthony Joshua, 25 years old. Four first round wins so far. He's had five inside two. This is the favoured session so far in his pro career, which began in October 2013. Manuel Leo was the first one. He's beaten Paul Butlin, people like Matt Skelton, Dennis Baktov, Michael Sprott. Now Rafael Zambano Love in front of him. 29 knockouts himself in his favor, but he hasn't landed anything yet. Looks slow, ponderous, doesn't he, at 34, Zambano. Yeah, he just pours the punches out. I'm not even sure where he'd get that knockout power from because... Jab just snapping his head back, and the combination, he nods. But he's already starting to come apart. He did go 12 with Shannon Briggs, but Shannon Briggs a shell of the fighter he once was, and a right hand lays him Two, out, beautifully three, timed four, by Anthony five, Joshua, six, and seven, the count's eight, at eight, nine, this is done and dusted, it is his sixth second round win, and his 12th straight victory in all, AJ lights up Birmingham, and he's done it in many other cities around the UK, and I'm sure he'll do it in many more. Yeah, he will. It was a bit of a hang to nothing, if I'm honest, though, because he didn't really beat anything that was in front of him. There was no real challenge there, and I'm sure he would have had tougher sparring sessions. So what that's what that's give him, maybe he's just loosened the bag out a little bit, but it hasn't done much more for him, if I'm honest. Yeah, over that injury, that back injury, it looks like got that three rounds with Jason Gavin. And that was one of the most dramatic knockouts yet in the Joshua story. One single shot, boom. Yeah, and lovely. Alex Lewis doing a few of those. Yeah, you know, lovely, lovely right hands. I mean, he's he can only beat who's in front of him. It, it was never expected to be, you know, any sort of real test for, for Joshua. You know, he's got bigger fish to fry later in the month. This was a bit of a workout, but I'm not really sure what it what it showed us or give us or if it helped him at all. I think it's to get his name, his face, his style shown around. Well, I think we're gonna UK. we're gonna see that a lot more, aren't we? Well, I think we're gonna get used to seeing Anthony Joshua do that to opponents. He is he is very good, and you know he could do that with anybody, if I'm honest. Nothing wrong with keeping him busy, though. No, definitely not. I mean, you know, you've got to... You know, the, the problem is that they're going to struggle to come up with opponents for, for Joshua because he is a formidable force. But sooner or later, we need to see him tested. Whether that's going to be Kevin Johnson, I don't know. He certainly is talking a good fight. He's here, Kevin Johnson. I wonder what he thought of that. 12-0. For Anthony Joshua. Ladies and gentlemen, timekeeper Martin Fallon recorded a time of one minute and 21 seconds of the second round on a count out. Your winner and still undefeated, taking that perfect record to 12 contests with 12 wins, with 12 knockouts. It's Is the apprenticeship coming to an end? Kevin Johnson awaits at the end of May. They'll be talking possibly, you know, the likes of David Price, Derek Chisora, eventually Tyson Fury. Are we over stage one?
Yes, most definitely. I think, you know, that sort of level of opponent, journeyman, you know, he handles them with, with absolute ease. So now we need to get competitive fights. We need to see what he can do, and he needs to learn. Let's get over to Andy Scott, who's surrounded by Anthony Joshua, Eddie Hearn, and Kevin Johnson. Yeah, thanks, Adam. I feel like a bit of a borrower here, to be honest. But uh, AJ, 12 straight win, albeit against limited opposition. What did you take from the whole, uh, the whole experience? Uh, the fight's one thing. Preparation was real good. It's all about learning, you know what I mean? 12 fights in now. What can I say? I mainly wanted to come out here. This is the last arena I have to tick off the list because we've gone right the way around uh, England. And Birmingham was lively. I just wanted to put on a great show, so thanks everyone for coming out. Do you think that marks the first chapter of your career, your apprenticeship? Do you now feel it's on to bigger and better and tougher matches? For me, I don't know how long the first chapter will be, but you know, I'm with Eddie, great promoter, my trainers, people that are managing my career. They'll be able to advise me more on that, but how I'm feeling personally, I'm feeling a bit more confident every fight that goes on. You know, I'm fighting this man across from me in a couple of weeks, so. Another little step up. I'm looking forward to it, getting the rounds in once again. You looked totally relaxed tonight, and I know there wasn't too much coming back from Zimbano, love. But was that because you did have one eye on uh, Kevin Johnson? No, no, I didn't really. I didn't know who was in the arena until one of the security just told me now. Because you know you've got to keep your eye on the prize. I don't want to look too far ahead. But these are basic things that you're taught in a boxing gym: shoulders relaxed, a little bit of head movement. You've got to flow. This ain't a two-round sport, even though the rounds are going one, two, and three. I'm training for 10 rounds, you know what I mean? So I can't go in there expecting to bomb everyone out straight away. So that's why I was real relaxed in case we went the distance. You haven't been past the three round marker. Are you confident that you've uh, got the stamina and the experience now to tackle someone like Kevin? Most definitely, what will be will be. He's trained hard, he's had a lot of notice. I've trained since I ever started boxing, so it's not like I put my foot on the gas as soon as I hear I've got an opponent. So I'm fit, I'm, I'm always getting stronger. Whether me and Kevin go 10 rounds, whether we go eight, whether we go six, four or two, it doesn't really bother me. It's a good fight. And as long as we put on a good show, I'll be happy. He'll have his say in a minute, but have you got a message for him? Good luck. Come to uh, promoter Eddie Hearn first. He's got a big smile on his face. People are going to look at that match on paper tonight and pick holes in it. Are you confident that you've guided Anthony to the correct position to fight someone like Kevin? Of course, you can pick holes in it all day long. You know, Rafael Zambano Love just went 10 rounds with WBO number two, Charles Martin, IBF number five. He went eight rounds with Eric Molina, WBC number 10. He went 12 rounds with Shannon Briggs 10 months ago. You know, you're not gonna stand up to this guy. And, and you know, the development's over. Now it's time for the real test. And a guy to my left of me who's been training for a long time for this fight, very experienced, never been stopped. Made a 30 if he's a huge card. And, and really the first real test for Anthony Joshua. I know this man fancies his chances. Bring him in now. Kevin, tell everyone here and everyone watching on TV why you think you can beat Anthony Joshua. Oh, that would make I'm going to beat the guy. I just look forward to being the guy that stops him. I don't beat a lot of people that said they wasn't going to get beat. And I, I'm definitely going to get him. Definitely going to get him. Have you seen anything tonight or having watched him on tape in the past that you think you can exploit? Say again? Have you seen anything tonight or anything in the past that you think you can exploit? I already got the antidote. I got the antidote for this. I don't watch tapes. I don't need to study tapes. What I got is what I got. And I know exactly what I need to do to stop this guy. I don't want to go the distance. It's not going to go 10. It's not going to go 8. It's not going to do none of that. It's going to be a stopper. It's going to be the meanest fight anybody will see. The meanest. This is just a small window into the atmosphere that's going to greet you in London on May 30th. I know you've boxed all over the world in big atmospheres before, but do you think that you can be the first man to beat Anthony Joshua? It's easy. It's going to be very easy because the one thing I never had to do it, I got it now. Just give the last word to Anthony. What's going to happen on May 30th? Two fighters are hungry that believe that they're going to put a show on, get the stoppage, they're going to come out, and we're going to clash. May the best man win, but I'm sure everyone in here knows who the best man is out of me and him. That's easy work for me. Good luck to both of you. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> That's a little spicy, wasn't it? It was, and uh, <laughs> I was looking at Anthony Joshua, and he still had his gloves on while Johnson was saying that type of stuff. got on the side. <laughs> Listen, they're, they're selling a fight, they're doing a job, but Kevin Johnson actually probably believes that, and that's what will make it for a very interesting fight. It's the biggest test so far of Joshua's career, and he has to work out the, the KG old pro. A lot of people haven't seen behind, and Anthony Joshua behind the scenes, he's a very hungry, 
at times nice, spiteful sort of fighter. So he has serious intentions for his fellow here. He does, and <laughs> it's, it's teeing up nicely. And we're looking at this now, and you know, the Ed Treddy's Ian Johnson, he means business. And no. so Anthony Joshua's just fought, he's obviously still fired up, but he handled that very well there, you know, he kept his cool, he kept his calm, and you know, he's still trying to be as nice as he can about him, as diplomatic as he can about it. Made the best man win, but he, the crowd know the best man he is. Listen to the crowd. Let's not forget about the performance just before that little encounter from yeah. Lionel Love. Joshua Anthony looked like he was, was pulling the shots, wanted to try and Look. stretch the rounds out a little bit, didn't he? Little bit, and, and looking at Love, it was sort of it was hard to, to fathom him out a little bit and to figure him out whether he was actually, you know, blocking, waiting for the big overhand swing or for the big bomb to come. He was flicking a lot of lazy jabs out, and the lazy jab was worrying me on his behalf because it's so easy to counter, especially with the right hands that Anthony Joshua throws, like that one there. But every time the uh, some battle lover just, just let this. Little lazy jab going that right hand from Joshua all the time get coming. And I heard Joshua's calling at the end of the first round saying, Don't let that lazy jab come out anymore. Punish you, count it over the top. And in the end, I think that was the shot that done it. You know, it was a lovely, lovely right hand over a lazy jab, which is, has put him out and he was gone. You know, you can't throw lazy jabs against someone like Andy Joshua. And by lazy jab, I mean, you know it, you know it yourself. You know, you, you're not throwing it to sting, you're not throwing it to set nothing up, you're just throwing it just to look busy. Or just to just to upset the opponent or offset the opponent. And you can't throw them with someone that punches like Anthony Joshua. I actually don't think Anthony Joshua was going for the knockout. Possibly not, you're right. But sometimes right. he's stronger than he actually realizes. That's, that's what I was trying to say before.